hi guys this is the sgfx welcome to my channel if you're new to my channel please click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell to get notified anytime i release any video so yeah let's jump right into the video so first of all we're going to be checking uh, be looking at um the highlights the highlights the variation of colors in the skin so first of all the highlights are are located over here i'm coming let me select a thicker brush so the highlights are located over here so which the highlights which are this color this color this color and also there are also um, brighter highlights so it depends on what you want but basically the highlights are found over here the brightest part of the photo brightest part of the photo brightest parts of the photo brightest part of the photo so these are the places the highlights are located um on this side this side i've done a similar video on this so then over this side and this place then this place so these are where the highlights are located and let's look for our um base color our base color just in case you are looking for a base color this will be the base color in between the base color should be in between your um highlights should be in between your highlights and this is the highlights and the the dark um shadow so the dark shadow and the highlights so the base color should be in between them so just in case you've been wondering how I get um, middle tones I get that's mid tones or middle tones or you can also call it base color so this is the um, trick I use so make sure you know the highlights first then you know the darkest side of the photo which is the dark shadow the shadow then you look for the high the base color over here you can still look for the base color over here it depends on whichever color you prefer but any color that is in between your dark shadow and the highlights is your base color so you pick it out you can pick it out then after doing that you look for your um uh, darker the darkest part of the photo in this case we are going to be doing a realistic painting so um the darkest part of the photo is categorized into two there is the lighter dark uh, the, um the, the one the lighter dark than the darkest there's a lighter part of the the dark uh, color then there's a lighter part of the dark color so it's categorized into i think three into there are several variations of skin tones over here so it, it doesn't have like a specific but just in case you're going to do like a semi-realistic uh, painting you can just categorize the skin tones into three parts which is the um the base color the highlights and the um shadow the shadow tones so yeah but for this case we are going to be doing a realistic painting so we need to categorize the skin tones into uh, different diverse variations of skin tones so just in case you've been wondering how uh, um, we get that kind of um, realistic look is because of the skin the skin of the um, the refer the skin of the um, of humans are um, like are not having just three um like they are, they are not having just basic three colors they are having variation of uh, although they are having basic three colors which are the highlight the base color then the uh, dark shadow but there are also if you can check um closely there are also different um colors added 
to it there are different diverse colors added to those busy colors so you can check as you um you move with your color picker you can see there are so many color diverse colors on the skin so many variations of color so instead um i've done a video on realistic painting uh, in which i pick the um, individual colors on the face then um but today i'm going i'm not going to do the same method i'm going to be showing you a different method on how to color the skin tones and color a, a realistic painting so um uh, so when you're layer layering your um, colors after you've gotten your beige color which is this um you can you can pick out all those um visible uh, skin tones that you think are visible you can see and also for for instance uh, for example when in between your highlights there's a beige color and there's also a reddish there's always a reddish color in between the highlights and the base color and also the uh, dark shadow so in between for instance this is your dark shadow eh? then this is your this is your dark then this is your base color or let's make this a base color this is your base then this is your highlights this is your highlight in between this i'm coming in between these colors there is a warmer color and the warmer color varies uh it um is visible based on um the is visible based on the area of the skin sometimes it's visible over here it's also visible over here and it based on the um, amount of light that is hitting the skin sometimes if you notice uh, on fair skin people there are when the light when the sunlight hits um like a fair skinned um, person you see like a kind of reddish color so this is more like the reddish color that i'm trying to explain here so it's going to give you like a reddish color which is in between the highlights the um, base color and also the dark uh, dark color so it's going to give you like kind of a red a reddish color in between them so you need to have understanding on them on that uh, i'm going to be identifying those reddish color in this in this in this reference so for instance there's this this area this area this area contains some reddish and uh, skin tones this also this area as you can see it's in between the it's in between the base color uh, and the highlights and also the dark skin and uh, the dark tones so as you can see also this place at the contour side it also contains like a reddish color it also contains the reddish color over here so it depends on how um the, the references and the lights on the uh, bouncing on the skin so yeah also this side contains some reddish reddish color so also this side is even ramp is even um visible over here a lot so yeah so you just need to like know where to place all this color you don't need to like pick uh, your um the color uh, from your references um like you don't need to just pick the color uh from directly from the reference and just start copying the color although as a beginner i can just advise you to do to do that but as you grow as an artist due to reach is an extent that you yourself you feel embarrassed why would i why do i still do this why do i still pick colors from my reference and just but it's not bad but you can still improve yourself by um learning from the reference instead of just mindlessly copying the uh, skin tones from the reference you can just look at your color wheel as you look at your color wheel and when 
you already know that when you shift your color wheel to this side you know that it will give you a highlight when you shift the color to this side you know that it's going to give you a kind of a skin tone and color so you don't just need to like um be copying everything when you just move your color you just use your um your skills just to when you move you get your skin tone when you have you want a lesser saturated um this thing um color a skin color you can just move it to this side it's going to give you like so you just have to just play around with your color wheel and your color schemes and everything will be good and also you need to know the you know you need to have an understanding of um the color variation uh, variations on the skin and also where to apply those reddish colors and the highlights and also the dark shadows on the skin so yeah this is just a brief like a brief uh, analysis on on this um on the reference so let's dive uh, right back to the video let's just continue the video so we are done analyzing the reference and we are done um locating the areas in which we are going to place our colors our base colors um how to get our base colors our middle tones our our highlights and where to get our dark shadows so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, practicalizing what we've just uh, learned a while ago so yeah um, i'm going to be picking up the base color base tone from the skin so i'm using a color picker to like um look for a color that is suitable to be used as the uh, base color after you've done picking you fill it make sure it's on a new layer make sure it's on a new layer under your sketch make sure it's on a new layer under your sketch and also when you're filling a middle tone or a base color for the shirts too it should be under your the base color for your skin so when you're done with that you make sure you create a new layer for um a new layer for the uh, picking of the colors uh, for the picking of the color as i've said i'm not we are going to be using a different technique today instead of picking um, the colors directly from the reference um bit by bit every each if uh, each and every color from the skin bit by bit we are going to be using um just some couple of colors to the um we're going to be blocking some co colors on the from the skin and um, to the uh, painting and we're going to be using some tricks to like um figure out how to um make them uh, how to get some other variation of skins so yeah as you can see i've used my color picker to like identify some dark areas dark sheets on the reference then i placed it make sure and um, the new layer you are we are blocking colors on our uh, uh, layers uh, uh, at the top of your base color and make sure um, your base color uh, middle tone has been selected has been selected just think uh, just to avoid um, going out when you're painting when to, uh, just to avoid like to have a clean work workspace to avoid and the colors going out of um please so yeah as you can see i'm i'm more like um i'm using my color picker to like pick some colors from the skin so i'm not actually picking uh almost every color i'm just being selective on some kind of colors that um that are essential uh, that that will bring out that uh, realism so yeah just make sure you just pick not every color just make sure there are some color variations that needs to stand out in the skin and um, pop out and uh, the realism that we want so yeah as you can see i've just um roughly uh, selected and collected some colors and make sure you're using a color builder for this 
for this um, picking so color builder gives you that kind of gradient um, that kind of opa opacity feel um, so yeah so it has um, color builder has um, that kind of pressure sensitivity the harder you apply the strength you apply harder the strength you apply on the brush the harder the the opacity and the thicker the opacity why i mean well the lesser you apply force on the brush the lesser the opacity so yeah um i've picked some colors i'm just ran randomly applying it on the um on the new layer at the top of the, i'm just trying to like block some colors it mustn't be perfect i'm just going to be picking some basic colors so i'm going to be using this reddish color uh, like color tones like this skin tone there's a reddish skin tone to just layer some foundations on the face some structures on the face that will guide us and um, on where to please our colors next so yeah i'm just laying out some colors on the on the middle tone just trying to like block some colors roughly you can just do actually what you want and i've done an in um another tutorial similar to this on realistic painting so you can still go check it out any of the method that you think is far much more easier you can follow and and you can you can go ahead and follow up and try it out so yeah i'm just trying to like um use the color builder to like um block out some colors and make sure it gives us that kind of um foundation so that we can work on it so i'm just roughly um, laying down that foundation with a single tone so yeah um we are practically going to be using a single brush i think we're going to be using the builder brush then we're going to be using the hair brush to, for like blending of the uh, skin tones you can still use your builder brush to blend like you can just there there are videos i've done on blending you can just be picking colors in between then blend it each other uh, blend them to each other and you can still use it an additional blending brush to like blend the colors together so yeah it's up to you to, to what you prefer to use for your when blending so yeah we're going to be using hair brush we're going to be using hair brush we're going to be using um the color builder then we're going to be using um i think um dotted to brush that's for the textures and yeah i think that's all for it just those are the brushes i use for my realistic painting so yeah and a little bit of um hard pencil that's for some little bit of dotted um details that's for the uh, texture so yeah i'm picking out some um, basic skin tones that are important on the face that are going to pop out that realism feel as i've said initially the skin tones uh, there are several variations of skin colors on the skin which combines to give us that result of um, realism so if you're going to be using just three basic colors that's going to um, give us a, a semi-realistic uh, feel or result but if you're going with this one because it has a lot of skin variations like it has a lot of colors on the face so we are going to be placing them on the face so as you can see that white part on the face which is the highlight and that base color that saturated red <coughs> sorry that saturated red is um found on the skin on the on the jaw and also on the beard side and also it's also found in the same side with that base color so yeah you can just identify it 
I just follow along and look at where I place the arrows. That's where you can find such kind of tones. There are so many tones. There are more than there are more than seven tones, skin tones on this particular reference. Um, same thing goes to um, the fair um, fair skin. Fair skin are also having variation of skin and tones and uh, colors on the face. So yeah, it depends on the reference and uh, the color of and the person you're using as reference. But there is always a variation of skin tones. There is always a variation of colors on the skin. There mustn't be a particular color on the skin. There must always be a variation of colors. There are varieties of colors on the face, which is normal. Is normal. When you, I've done a class, a crash class on kulu color, sorry, color theory and color schemes. I've done a crash class on color schemes on how to pick up um, skin tones. I'll leave um i'll leave the link to, um, to the video in the description box so that you go check it out so yeah as you can see there's some reddish sites there are some saturated non-saturated site there are some um less um less um brighter side there are dark darker sides so yeah these are those colors that combine together to form to form that realistic look so we are going to be applying it on this video yeah so yeah, just stay back and try to and identify every bit of each of the color on the face so yeah i'm going to be dropping the pdf and um, sorry i'm going to be dropping the psd file after this tutorial i'm going to be dropping the psd file in the description box so that you can go check uh, it out and identify you can simply identify the um identify the colors yourself and also and see how i used the color and also you can assess everything i've done on these tutorials there you can assess the layers you can check everything i've done there um yeah so you are free to check it out and also make sure you've duplicated your layer um, your reference to uh, layer if you're using android phone you can duplicate the reference layer and take one of the reference above and make sure another reference is below so that when you're painting you can just um, easily get access to see what you're painting so yeah i'm using my color builder to like apply the highlights so i'm trying to like apply the highlights around that side which is the brightest side according to our analysis those are the sites that contain the um, brighter colors so we are going to be blocking them over there so yeah just keep on looking at your reference make sure reference is at the top of that layer you use for the uh, blocking of the colors placing of the colors make sure the reference is above the um, the layer you use for the your painting so yeah and make sure the reference and um, is a reference opacity is 100 percent so that you can um, you can visualize it um correctly so that you can see actually um how the reference is and to avoid mistakes yeah so yeah that's all for this video just identify the sites in which you have the darks identify the sites in which you have the um, reds the the middle tones the highlights the also extra variations of skin tones you can just add them up so that i'm just that's all for this video just be following what is on the reference and place it instead of directly copying i'm going to be we're going to be doing it with understanding this time around we're going to be knowing what we are doing instead of mindle mindlessly um, copying the skin tones directly from the reference even though this was also copied from the reference but we are trying to like 
see if we can understand what we're doing this time around yeah we are going to like try to understand how these colors works so yeah i'm going to be applying the reddish color the darker colors to the to the shoulder so yeah just keep on i've done tons of tutorials on how to shade on how to blend so you, all you need to do is just to um, go into the channel check the videos out and um watch the video over and over again if you have questions you can drop in the comment box so yeah
So as I've said earlier, um, about the British part of the and uh, the face um, in the che- at the cheek, and most especially at the t- cheek, at the side of the forehead, at the um, most especially there are some um, sites that have some reddish color, um, like it's more like a gradient uh, flow in between the middle tone and the highlights and the base color so yeah it's found mostly at the contour so i'm applying that um that um reddish color to the contour to give it that kind of realistic depth uh, give it that kind of realistic look um also i apply some of the reddish colors to the shoulder to the shoulder too as well so yeah um knowing that having the knowledge of color zones is very important so that um, it can help you to like know how to um, paint realistically without um any form of issue um figuring out where to place those greens those blues and those pinks and also those reddish colors on the face so yeah so i'm just trying to like um copy and the colors i'm trying to like and please the colors right where they are supposed to be i was trying to like please the colors where they are supposed to be so there are some shadows um below the nose some shadows below the nose um make sure you just and keep on placing the colors right there's i'm still using a layer to pick all those colors you can still add a new layer to like um after you're done picking some color you can merge and uh, uh, open another new layer to like pick up colors again then merge so but we are practically we uh, we are practically using a single layer for the picking up of the colors so yeah when we can pick out colors uh, on the separate layers and if you after you're done picking out the colors then you merge so yeah it's still not a problem you can still use multiple layers just do what you like to do and make sure um you're enjoying the process and also make sure um is you're understanding what you're doing so yeah well, we are applying colors the nose the nose that um, reddish color and some black uh, shadow colors to like give it the the depth the depth to pop out the colors to make sure it looks like a nose so, yeah
so yeah there is this shadow area over here below the neck so we're going to be using a solid dark color to like fill it fill it up make sure um you're you on the new layer just to avoid mistake um you can just apply the color using your um, builder brush to like apply the black colors and make sure you're applying pressure to the um color builder just to have that thick feel after you're done with that you can still apply some gradient and uh, like some will i say less opacitated um feel to it um at the edge as you can see that's what i've done i've like um applied another black color but like a faded a black color below the thick black black color just to like replicate what is on the reference as you can see there's like a shadow um near the black color like like a faded like a faded black i i'm sure you understand what i'm saying below the shadow the thick shadow there's more like a shadow a lesser shadow which is not having that thick feel so yeah like a lighter um dark so we're going to be applying the lighter dark color below the the thick dark color so make sure when you're experimenting that that black colors that dark sides make sure you're on a new layer just to avoid mistake when you're done applying the dark sides below the neck um at the neck then you can just clean some um um colors that uh, have gone overboard and you can just readjust then you can match the layer together so yeah just to avoid mistakes you can just make sure you're working on the new layer just to avoid mistakes because black colors are too sensitive they can um um you have to be too sensitive with black colors because they can um and they can just mix up your work you can just make sure mix up your work they need to be um used differently after you're done with using them differently then you merge them same thing goes to whites too as well so yeah i'm trying to like um bring um color that a dark line around the neck i'm just trying to like and also i i'm trying to like blend as i do color please colors using my color builder i'm trying to like use it to also blend the colors to like um to like make sure i um i bring out that um the the size that i'm trying to like call uh, paint so i'm just um, mixing them mixing the colors all together just to avoid coming back again for the blending so yeah i'm just trying to like blend it using the brush then um placing the colors then coming back again to blend so yeah that's why you're seeing this um around the neck uh, like you're looking at it um already blended because i'm using the brush strokes like blend the colors all together just to and uh, speed up the work just to like make the work um fast already so yeah
Oh, hello guys so this part is um, all about detailing and texturing so we're going to be creating a new layer which is going to be at the top of our already uh, already um, painted um, colors already um, painted colors so the layer should be the new layer should be at the top of our our painting so after you're done with that then you select the dotted to brush when you're done selecting a dotted to brush then you um pick up a um a color from the dark sides of your reference as you can see i've already picked the color that from the darker um, side of the reference so we're going to be applying that dotted to brush all over the painting make sure it doesn't go out of the painting so as to dirty um to dirty your work let's just make sure you apply it religiously over the uh, painting make sure you do it clear carefully so yeah you're gradually applying the texture using the dotted to brush all over the um the painting so make sure you're doing this on a new layer which is at the top of your painting um and other base color mid tones make sure they are under this particular new layer so yeah so make sure it's on a new layer so after you're done applying all the texture then make sure you just apply the texture all over the painting Let's keep on applying the texture all over the painting. So after you're done applying those textures, then you can go to select a lighter part of your reference or you can just create a palette of your own like a color palette for the highlights of that's you can just choose any color that can serve as a highlight for you so after you're done, you're done with that you start applying it over this um, highlight area the brighter side of the photo don't apply it on the darker side of the photo make sure you're applying this texture at the brighter side of the photo so as you can see i'm applying it at the forehead at the center of the nose in 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 those areas that are um having uh, highlights are having and um, the lighter parts of the face yeah, i'm just trying to like apply them over Let me make sure you apply them apply them all over those areas that are i'm um, having lights so when you're done applying you can change the blend mode of these textures you can just combine both the texture for the dark side and for the highlights in the in one layer then you can change the layer blend mode to um soft light it's going to give you a very nice texture and then change the blend mode so soft light is going to give you as you can see it's giving us a very nice texture as you can see there's a difference so it's going to give us that kind of skin and um, texture feel so when you're done with that you can create another new layer for um your detailing and for highlighting as well so that this new layer you're going to be creating at the top of your um texture layer is going to be for the highlighting and for the detailing so um you're going to also be using the dotted to brush for the the highlighting to, to if you like you can use it for the highlighting you can also use an airbrush for the highlighting also so it up to is up to you it depends on you on, on what kind of results you want but i'm going to be using the dotted tool for some highlighting highlights on the nose on the forehead as well so just to give it that intense texture that's 
kind of intense texture just to pop out uh, the realism um the, just to pop out that, that realistic look so yeah we're going to be using the dotted tool as well for the the texturing and also for the highlighting so yeah So guys, um, you're going to be using the my hard pencil or we're going to be using the fountain pen for the highlights of the top of the eye and the, and the eye bag and the top of the eye. We're going to also be using it for the highlights on the lip, um, for the glowy lip. So we're going to be using, you can either use any of the, you can use any of the pencils to do the highlights can use the fountain pen you can use the hard pencil you can use the fine line pen you can use whichever pen that you pencil or pen that you think it's um 
suitable for you to use you can use it for the detailing you can just apply it over the top of the eye just to give it that kind of glowy look and that kind of shiny and uh, look so uh, i'm still going to be using the pencil for uh, the highlighting and the um, detailing of the lip and the glowy lip so i'm still using the same layer for all this i'm using the uh, highlight layer for the detailing of the top of the eye too and make sure the highlight layer is on a on a blend mode on soft glow the blend mode of uh, the highlight layer is on soft glow just to give you that kind of glowy look but just in case you you are not interested in getting that kind of glowy look you can still um leave it at normal and apply your texture but um if you want it to like if you want your um paintings to like pop out um like make the makeups you're trying to um do on your painting if you want to like make it to work out like to make your glitters to pop out to look nice i would advise you to and uh, change your blend mode from normal to um, a soft glow or if you're using procreate you can um, use and the add the add blend mode it's going to be giving you the same results to um to the the soft glow in autodex so yeah
hi guys so we've come to the end of this tutorial video so if this video was helpful please give it a thumbs up and also um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel please subscribe and also share with friends and comment um, if it was helpful and if you're having any difficulty you can comment and um, chat me up on, on my social media platform and I will um, answer you so thanks guys for watching see you in my next video bye